Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm talking about methane, specifically methane in the Arctic. Of course, we know that methane gas is a very powerful greenhouse gas. When you take an average over 100 years, which is for some reason still done, even though the lifetime of methane is about 11 or 12 years in the atmosphere, the effect of it is is uh, average over uh, over 100 years and the global warming potential is 34. Okay, that's the latest number. Um, people used to say it was 20 or 22 or 24, you know, more accurate data on, on uh, the global warming potential of methane and that's a relative to a CO2 molecule on a mass basis, I believe. Um, the latest number is uh, 34 for a hundred year time scale. However, you know, 20 year time scale, it's, it's 86. So um, a mass of methane compared to a mass of CO2 traps effectively um, is a, causes warming at a, at a rate of 86 times that um, of, of the CO2 mass. Now, what's really important is that is is uh, over a year or a few year time scale, that number is more like 150 times, 150 to 200 times. So in the short term, methane is a, an extremely powerful greenhouse gas. So methane coming up in the Arctic can cause tremendous localized warming in the Arctic. Now, the atmosphere and the winds do circulate things around and eventually disperse that methane. And also the key thing is what removes methane from the atmosphere. And this is the hydroxide ion, which is OH minus. It's derived when water vapor is broken down, for example, by the sun, sunlight, or other, other um, it's broken down, okay? It's dissociated, the H2O molecule into a hydrogen and an OH minus. And the OH minus is extremely reactive so it has a very short time, lifetime in the atmosphere. And it does react with lots of different things. It's called the scavenger of the atmosphere, if you like, the, the cleanser. It reacts with methane, it produces CO2 and, uh, and water um, again. So, so the main sink, if you like, the main thing that removes um, methane from the atmosphere is water vapor so near the equator, there's tons of water vapor in the atmosphere, tons of OH minus. Even if there's a lot of methane coming up from wetlands, etc., that methane is broken down very quickly near the equator. Up in the Arctic, it's extremely dry, almost like a desert. In term, it's very cold, so the used to be very cold, so the water vapor concentration is much lower and water vapor, you, you know, especially in the winter when the Arctic Ocean is, is supposed to be covered with sea ice, which it, you know, it is for the most part in the winter now, although that's going to change soon. There's not a lot of evaporation of water, not a lot of sources of water vapor, and the air is very cold, can't hold much water vapor. So therefore, there's very little OH minus that is formed and methane that stays in the Arctic swirling around will last a lot longer than that 12 years, you know, um, lifetime, if you like, average lifetime, because um, there, there, there's, there, there's no, there, there's, there, there, there's not enough OH minus to, to break it down up there. Okay, so let's continue, um, continuing from my past video. What we have here is we have the methane forecasts from the Copernicus atmosphere data, satellite data. And this is, so we're looking at the North Pole regions and the levels is, this is at the surface. Now let's start going up. So this is, uh, eight, this is about 1.5 kilometers off the surface, 850 hexapascals of pressure. So what you can see is the hot spots are starting to disperse um, and the methane is kind of spreading out. We're losing the, uh, you know, if the source, the source is the surface, right? So now it's getting dispersed and moved. 
And as we go to 500 hexapascals, just about halfway up the atmosphere, you can see the methane here, and it takes on a more circular pattern. And this is driven by the, um, the jet streams and the general circulation um, around the pole here. So it's taking a more circular shape. And when we go to about eight kilometers or so, seven or eight kilometers, we're starting to get less, um, the concentrations are starting to go down. And then when we go to 50 hexapascals, we're starting to get into the stratosphere. Um, you can see that the methane is, the, the levels have actually um, pretty much gone. And in the center here, they're actually lower and we get a ring here of methane. Okay, so that's sort of the characteristic um, that we see. So let's go back to this. Um, and, okay, we've got Robin's blogs here. And the question is, you know, and then there's Margot's great videos showing the Copernicus data. Okay, so now let's have a look at some other data and see, you know, are we having a methane incident or methane event right now? So the MEDOP satellites are European Meteorological Monitoring Weather and Climate from Space, European satellites. And one of the infrared sensors is the IASI sensor. So this is explains the sensor and uh, it's measuring the it measures the infrared part of the spectrum. Infrared is basically the heat. It's basically the um, wavelengths that are absorbed by greenhouse gases. So let's have a look at the data. So if you just Google mixing ratio of methane MEDOP1, you can find this NOAA product. And this is for Monday. I don't think there's any data for two. Okay, the data is up to Monday, December 10th. And these are different pressures. The lower the pressure, the higher you are in the atmosphere until you go down to surface, which is about 10, 13 millibar. So let me just show you, um, let me just show you, okay, the atmosphere, as you go from the surface, remember gravity pulls down the air. So the pressure is highest at the surface. It's just over a thousand millibar. A thousand millibar is actually about two meters off the ground, 10, 13 would be the nominal number for, for the surface. So it's a thousand. So as you go, and this is the altitude in kilometers, and this is the pressure. So you drop 200 millibar, you go to 800, you're a couple, about two kilometers high. Notice this is linear initially. You go to 600 millibar, that's about four kilometers high, and so on. But this doesn't continue linearly, okay? It starts going up like this. So about 11, this is about, looks like uh, 10 kilometers, 15, about 12 and a half kilometers here. And you can see that's about 180 millibars. So, and then when the pressure drops, like 50 millibar is actually, well, you know, starting to go up into the stratosphere. Well, it depends on where, where you are. So the, the tropopause ends, goes up about 10 to 13 kilometers. It's about 11 kilometers on average, but at the equator, it's about 17 kilometers, and at the pole, it's about seven kilometers. So there's a lot of variation, and this is because at the pole, it's colder, cold air gets compressed, it's, it's held more tightly to the surface. Whereas at the equator, the air is very warm, so it's not comp as compressed as much, it's about 17 kilometers high. Okay, so remember that. Now you can get more information from a table Interestingly enough, if you're well below sea level, you know, if you're in the, the, the atmospheric pressure is higher because the air, you know, the pressure is, it's the sum total of all the mass of air above you. So when you get to sea level, when you get to zero, it's 1013.25. And as you go up in, as you go, it, this is altitude in feet and this is altitude in meters. So as you go, here's, here you are at 1013, zero meters, go up, go to about um, 900, you're almost a kilometer up, 914 meters up. Okay, drop to about 800, you're, up, you're about two kilometers up almost. So you can get details 
So you can get the details in each region. So one of the pressures was about 50 millibars. So that's almost 20 kilometers high. Okay, and there's some pressures that are much lower than, than 10. You know, 10 would be 30,000, over 30,000 meters high. Okay, so that's how, the, how it relates. So we can look here and what we can see is you can see the data. So in general, at the surface, okay, so this is the mean at the surface here, and this is the range on the whole. So you can see some higher regions up here. This is December 11th. This is, so this is actually about two meters above the surface. And you can see the methane is pretty much spread out um, around the planet here in this image. Okay, this, the resolution probably doesn't pick up all the hot spots and stuff, so it's smeared. You know, it's like it's smeared here. You don't see the details that you see in Copernicus. So let's go back a bit. And what you can see is that as you go up higher and higher, you start getting higher levels up in the poles. Okay, uh, mean 1830, this is the range, and you start the color code you know, you, this is 16, 17, 18, 19, almost about 1940 or something. So anything above 1940 is up in this region. So you can see that there's more of a distribution with, with um, latitude um, as you go up to higher and higher um, altitudes. And, and 17, 7, 18 millibar, that's about three kilometers or so high. Okay, uh, let's go up about halfway through the, um, into the atmosphere, so 515, uh, 506 millibar. Okay, and what you can see here is you can see, you know, the poles are, the, the north pole going down to, you know, quite low latitudes, Florida here. You know, the, the levels are higher. Okay, the levels are higher of, of methane, parts per billion, and then it tapers down. And then interestingly enough, as you, so that's five, this one here, as you go up even more, then the methane starts to be smeared, okay? So the, the higher concentrations actually start moving down towards the equator. I mean, I'm just showing you what the data, I'm just talking about what the data is, is telling me. See, I'm gonna have to get a new computer. This thing's a bit slow. Um, and then when you get to very, very low pressures here, you actually see the higher concentrations of methane are bracketing the equator. Okay, and this is to do with, has to do with the global circulation. And as you go even higher and higher, you can see, so the pressure is getting lower and lower, you can see the methane is getting channeled towards the equator. So this is 22 millibar. Um, we said about 10 millibar was 100,000 feet, right? 10.9 or something. So let's go to there. Um, this is 8.82. Okay, so 10 millibar. So we're at 100,000, sorry, 100,000 meters, not feet, I believe. Is that true? Or 30,000 meters. Anyway, you can check here. Uh, 10.9, 30,000, 30 kilometers, 100,000 feet. Okay, so at this altitude, you can see that the higher levels of methane are channeled around the equator. Um, the mean is 992 up to 1363. So the numbers here are probably about 1300 ppb of methane at, at um, that altitude, those high altitudes. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is basically the, this is flask measurements now. Okay, Earth System Research Laboratory. This is measured on the ground, flask measurements. This is September 2018, the mean, the average 1860.2. So compared to a year ago, it's gone up about um, 7.5 ppb. Okay, so this is the plot from 2014, how it varies throughout the year. Okay, but the general rise, you know, it's rising strongly. You know, it, it's rising fast, slows down a bit, rises fast. This is the global monthly thing with the stall about 2007. And these are the numbers per year. So we've had numbers where it increases higher per year, 